So this evening, of course, as we try to adapt a little bit to the situations that we're in, though we haven't really been doing the processions outdoors anyway, someday. Like we did on Palm Sunday, it will just be the short procession with our Lord's body up to the back and then down to the front. Now, normally in the processions, when we go outside, of course, everyone follows and we go out and around. And when we come in, the men who are carrying the shroud of our Lord, they stand in the back as everyone's coming in from the outside of the church. And when you come in, of course, you duck under the shroud. It's your symbolic entrance with our Lord into his tomb. So what we'll be doing this year is the two men who are carrying the shroud, as we go around, following the, they'll be following the priest, and we come back up here, the two men will stand at the front of the aisle here. And then each keeping your distance, always you know, keeping your space. That's why we don't walk in procession. It's too hard to keep the six feet and all of that. But still to allow that symbolic gesture of entering with our Lord into his tomb, the men will stand on either side holding the shroud up and allowing each person to come and to duck under and then to return to their place. Then we have the ceremony of the metani. We do the insensation of the body, which will be up at the front of the church. And the ministers, the servers, the priests up in front here, priests will do the insensation of the shroud in our Lord's body. And then we sing the Mishicho Destilev, which you have in the book. You who are crucified for us, have mercy on us. And this case is not just the profound bow from the waist, but it's what we call metani. And the metani is all the ministers will go down on all fours, forehead to the ground, three times during this prayer. Just, and then what will happen is those, each of you can approach, again, keeping your, your social distance. You don't, have to, you don't do metani if you want to, it's fine. But normally just come up and make a profound bow before the body of our Lord and then return to your place. And then we'll continue with the ceremony for the entombing of the body of our Lord on the side. So there's just slight differences of the things that we will be doing. <clears throat> so we will begin on page 55, as you have it marked in your booklets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Grant us, O Lord, the resplendent colors of your compassion and mercy to paint within our hearts the image of you hanging on the cross out of love between two themes. When we will have imprinted the awesome vision of your passion within our spirits, then we will be worthy of the glory of your resurrection and the gift of your grace. And we shall worship and praise you for your mercy toward us with your Father and your Holy Spirit now and forever. So you may sit, and we will, we will sing, recite Psalm 22. And as we do, back and forth between the sanctuary with our normal tone, dun 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 My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far from saving me? So far from my words of anguish. O oh my God, I call by day and you do not answer. I call by night and I find no reprieve. Yet you, O oh God, are holy, enthroned in the praises of Israel. In you our forebears put their trust. They trusted and you set them free. I can count every one of my bones. They stare at me and blow. They divide my clothing among them. They 
they cast lots for my robe. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the heavenly peacemaker who was hung on the wood of the cross. He opened his arms and he gathered all people and nations. The Lord became flesh and by his cross has saved the world. He received true glory and worship from all corners of the earth. The good shepherd showed his goodness to his flock by caring for his sheep. He proved how much he had loved them by offering himself. To the good one be glory and honor all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. We worship, thank, and praise your divinity, O God. For you created us in your image and formed us in your likeness. We praise your salvation, O lover of all people. On this Friday you gave us life by your cross and set us free by your death. In the beginning you completed our creation on a Friday, the sixth day. Your holy hands formed mortal Adam from the dust of the earth, and you molded and created him in your image. From your own mouth you breathed breath of life into him. Thus he was fashioned in beauty and perfected in knowledge, a marvelous creation. But in his ignorance Adam wondered, neglected your command, and was delivered up to judgment. Death now entered to distort the image of your creation. But even after this, O oh, compassionate and loving Lord, your mercy prevailed upon all. On the sixth day, another Friday filled with mysteries, your hands were nailed to the cross. You were humiliated and mocked and your side pierced in order to give new life to the work of your hands through the blood and water which flowed from your side. On this Friday of your saving passion and the commemoration of your life-giving cross, the church petitions you through the mouths of her children with the fragrance of this incense. As in the beginning you created out of love, and then returned to save and give us new life, now grant your mercy upon us, the work of your creation. 
By your cross, grant peace to the whole universe. By your cross, remove anger and put an end to all wars. By your cross, eliminate all dissension. By your holy cross, curb violence and pacify the angry. By your cross, humble the proud, expose the self-serving, and remove the enemy. By your cross, establish your church in strength and make her monasteries and convents firm. By your cross, purify your priest and exalt the deacons. By your cross, sustain the elderly, subdue the haste of youth, and educate all the young. By your cross, pardon sinners, forgive wrongdoers, and guard your flock which now worships you, honors your passion, embraces your wounds, and is glorified and exalted by your crucifixion. Save us and save all your people. Completely perfect in us your strength and visit us and revive us so that our image may be renewed and our likeness be recovered. May your comfort take away the sadness of our hearts and your compassion dry away all our tears. Then we shall wear your glory and be clothed in your whole light. Make us worthy to meet the day of your resurrection that heirs in your whole kingdom. Then, without ceasing, we shall raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Come, O faithful church, great incense of forgiveness. You have offered yourself on the wood of the cross for foolish sinners. You sacrificed your safe for our sake. Now, O Lord, cancel the debt of our guilt and save us from retribution. Remove the scourge of anger and all suffering from us. Encourage us with your joyful hope and with your healing remedy. 
In your compassion, pardon the faithful departed, and we shall praise you with them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Praise the mighty one who carries all creation, for he will to carry his cross and endure pain. Praise the mighty one who carries earth and heaven, for he willed to carry his cross and endure pain. On this day, the Son of Justice, the the pillar, while the children of darkness stood and scourged him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. But if, in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate I am a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through law, then Christ died for nothing. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly exhibited as crucified. The only thing I want to learn from you is this. Did you receive the Spirit by doing works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish, having started with the Spirit, Are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so much for nothing? If it really was for nothing, well then, God supply you with the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you by your doing the works of law or by your believing what you have heard. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So, you see, those who are descendants of Abraham, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel before Abraham, saying, all the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believe. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all things written in the book of law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, Whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Jesus Christ the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through the faith. Praise be to God always. Hell, oh hell. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow before his footstool. Em, oh
When they came to the place that is called the Scala, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he be the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you be the king of the Jews, save yourself. And there was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who had been hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and save us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we have deserved for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, to Je he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, Amen, I say to you, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. And a jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop, and they held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is accomplished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. After this, when Jesus knew that all had been accomplished, he said, I thirst. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Now, following on Palm Sunday, I'd recommended that during this Passion Week, you read the Gospel of St. John. And St. John, especially because of the context that we have historically this year, it's important to see that distinction on the way the evangelist portrays our Lord. That as we've mentioned, it's not about a tragedy and a betrayal of our Lord that he happens to come victorious out of. But for St. John, writing decades after our Lord, he wants us to understand that our Lord has always been in charge and that what takes place during his passion is a revelation. And it comes to the supreme revelation at this moment 
of I thirst, the fulfillment of the scriptures. And you notice the term which I began by quoting. St. John adds frequently during the recounting of the passion in the Greek, eidos, knowing. Knowing that his hour had come. Knowing that all things had been accomplished. St. John wants us to understand in this from the, the Last Supper through to his death that our Lord is always the one who is mastering and directing everything, including his death. And that is why the last words that John has recorded for our Lord is, everything has been accomplished. If you look at the Husoyo, which is extraordinarily beautiful tonight, and this whole image that mankind, that the human being is created in the image of God incarnate, and by the madness and the lunacy of Adam and Eve in the beginning, how they distort and maim that image, that we were created in the image of the word incarnate, thousands of years before our Lord entered into time in history. That image is what we're made after, not some philosophical idea of intelligence and will and intellect, but specifically made in the image of God incarnate, so that our Lord enters into time in order among his people to return to them the image which is meant to be theirs. And not just mankind, but your image and your image, my image, individually, in particular, that our Lord dies for us. Because each of us have a particular place in all of creation, which is unique. My particular person, my particular life, and the particular things that I am meant to accomplish in this act of creation. That is what our Lord comes to restore. And he does this so that each of us, we talk about being saved. We talk about being redeemed. It doesn't mean that simply we're being spared from a disastrous end of hell. That's obviously, but that's a conclusion. What the redemption is about is allowing us to recover that image in which we were created so that each of us individually, and of course humanity as a whole, can accomplish the particular work and the beauty and the depth the profounder, the depth of what we are supposed to accomplish individually. In other words, our Lord in going to his death is to allow us to realize the goodness and the beauty for which we were created. And that's a much different vision than just being, su su being saved from condemnation or hell. And so that whole image of St. John, when he talks about this knowing, this knowing, this revelation that is taking place, it happens just before the washing of the feet at the Last Supper. Knowing that his hour had come and loving his own unto the very end, he rises up, sets aside his outer garment, puts on a towel and proceeds to wash feet. The washing of the feet is not meant to be, again, a solicitation to social activism. The washing of the feet is that knowing to reveal the, to reveal the image, the reality of the word incarnate in this service. And in revealing himself, St. John wants us to understand that he is king. He is always in charge. And if there's ever been an appropriate time for us to see that message and to take it to heart, it's this year during this passion. Nothing escapes God's control. And God knows and he is fully aware of everything which takes place. But we don't. He wants us to come to knowledge. He wants us to enter into wisdom. He wants us to enter into the understanding that he is trying to teach us by his providence. That is king. He governs, he directs, he teaches in order to bring us into the markuto, into the kingdom. The kingdom is knowledge which begins here below. 
And that's why when you read the Gospel of St. John, note, more than any other evangelist, the word king comes up frequently. A dozen times it comes up in just the two chapters recounting our Lord's death. And St. John gives us that story of that duel on the human level back and forth between Pilate and the priests. Because they come in and they see that this inscription over the top of our Lord's name, written in Latin and in Hebrew and in Greek, so everybody can read it who can read, and they're furious. Because it says, Jesus the Nazarene, this is the king of the Jews. And when they come in and they say, no, you can't write it this way. You have to have it written that he claimed that he said that he was king. And we have that famous answer by Pontius Pilate, which only John gives us, I have written what I have written. And he just sends them away. He is king. And that kingship is why when we carry the body in this procession, It is more than just a death and burial. When we do the metani before our Lord's body, this is homage paid before the throne of the king. This is not weeping in tears of anguish of people who have lost a friend. This is for those who understand the divine light of wisdom, knowing, kingship, which is revealed in these days. And when we have come to understand that knowing, And when we have come to understand that kingship, Lord and King, then we have the ability to enter into that restored image, that restored depth of beauty, which is referred to in the Husoyo. That is salvation. That is redemption. And that is the revelation of the sacred heart of the profound ways in which the Lord God teaches his flock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, O crucified one, lifted high on the cross, you raised up creation to its wondrous creator on high, We call out to you in prayer, O Lord, hear us. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of God, you were stripped and nailed on the wood of shame that we may be clothed with glory and victory. We call out to you in prayer, O Lord, hear us. The church saw the Son Son of God God, crucified upon the cross of Golgotha. She drew her dear saving Lord and received his body to forgive her sins. Kyrie eleison, have mercy, Lord. O church, come approach the cross. Come adore the banner of your holy group and sing him with praise to him for his suffering on the cross.
73 unless Dame FIFA do you want to sing something that's perfect yes as we come up to pay homage to our Lord Thank you. 
As I lay the body into the tomb, we can recite together the supplication, which is on page 75 at the end of your booklets. Morani Traham Alain. Mary then approached the cross on the heights of Golgotha. She saw her only son. Here the sorrow flowed from her. She began to sigh and lament, giving forth a mournful cry. Her companions wept with her when they saw her grieving there. Let each one compose a song, so to mourn your bitter peace. 